here today on the River Glen in Lincolnshire with three top anglers in Joe Roberts, Steve Hemingway and Lee Klimchuk. This river is full of fish and on cold days like today we're going to show you how to catch lots of fish on a variety of different methods. Right boys, let's go and see what we can catch. sat now with my mate Joe and Joe you've been catching one a bung you've been catching some roach and you've been fishing a whip I see yeah yeah three meter whip to end the deeper water's on the inside and the flow's on the inside so no need to go far plenty of roach there yeah I see you've been catching one a chuck oh there's another one and um, what's been the uh, best bait today oh it's all pinky feeding feeding a few pinkies and uh, pinky on the hook and you're fishing a whip, yep. so a whip is non-elasticated, it's right. a flick tip. Yep. So why are you using a flick tip as opposed to elastic? I prefer flick tip, A, it's quicker, and B, when you're catching lots of fish like from one ounce to four ounce, they all come in at the same height when you right. swing them. Whereas with a the rubber, they, it's different, they come in at all, all different heights. So you can be quicker and you can accumulate more fish quicker. That's right. It's for, you know, for, for in the match conditions. Yeah. Bigger weight. Yeah. Uh, just go through what rig you're using then, because it looks quite a positive rig. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a grand float, bulk down with just two number 10s, droppers, split. Uh, oh, uh, a quality fish. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. And size hook? 18, fine wire, fine match. And you're fishing a single pinky on that? Single pinky. And I can catch five or six fish on the same pinky if I... Right, so yeah. they're not shy then? No, 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 they're having it. And you've just been... What sort of ground bait have you been using today? Just, uh, it's just um, gross guard on with a um, bit of black lake and a bit of soil. Just so you can do nice, nice to make a ball, quick ball, hard ball, want to chuck. Why are you putting soil in it, mate? Uh, soil makes it break up quicker. OK. And... Um, Makes it easier to form a ball quickly with one hand. Just, Joe's, yeah. I know it's early, it's just off the bank molehill. So you can just put some of that in your yeah. mix, sieve it off, yeah. and that's what you're doing with it. Yeah. Nice and simple. Little ball like that, yeah. straight in front of me. Lovely. Just there. And so, then the float will come down onto it. Rather than trying to run down towards it, you want to be running over it. And you've been fishing for about two and a half hours. What sort of weight do you reckon you've got now? Close to double figures. It's cold winter's day and you're catching double figures of roach, usually with me sat behind someone, it'd be like the fish would go, but they just keep on coming. Brilliant fishing. Yeah, it is good, River Glen, very good. Pinkies, ground bait, double figures of roach, awesome fishing. I'm gonna leave you to it, mate. Thanks, mate. That with Steve now. I've just took a slice of bread off his bait tray and it's got loads of holes in it. So obviously Steve's having a good day also. Yeah, it's been good. It started off a little bit slow um, because of the frost, I suspect, last night. But we've been catching fish the rest of the time. From that size up to about eight ounces. Nice. Nice fishing. Um, yeah, it's been good. So Joe's fishing the whip, but I see you're fishing uh, a longer pole. So just talk us through your approach. Um, obviously, I see you using bread. Yeah. Uh, just tell us what you're doing. Yeah, what I've done, I've plumbed up and I've found the deepest water I can find as far away from me as possible. And then that, I'm just fishing the one line mm. with bread punch. What I've got, I've got three or four rigs set up from a gram down to a point four. And the main reason for this is, is the flow on this, on this river glen does change. So at the start, when we started today, it was quite fast. It was probably about right for a gram. 
and as we've gone through the day it's got a little bit slower and uh, generally you have to lighten your egg down just to get you that, that presentation right and enable you to just trip the bottom and stop it now and, mm. and again and lift the bait up off the bottom. If your rig's too heavy, you can't oh, really do that. No. So, as you can see, we're catching plenty of fish and it's been really good. And it's all been on bread punch? All bread punch. The only th thing I've done is I've got some dead pinkies in with me punch um, and now and again I can slip a couple of pinkies on and, you know, I've had a couple of six or eight ounce mm. fish doing that. So it's just a change bait, that's all. Mm. So, um, I'll so show you what I've been feeding. Always giving yourself options. To slip a pinky on if it's going a little bit quiet or a little bit harder it might sort out a better fish yeah that's right right at the start today i've had a ball like that as you can see it's got a few pinkies in mm. and what i did i squeezed it actually a little bit too hard and this is important this is because that as it is now yeah. will virtually go straight to the bottom and there won't be a lot come off it what you're trying to do is is create not just a spot, it's not like fishing bloodworm, you want to be running your rig along, so you want to like a food trail. Oh. So in the ideal world, you want it to go halfway down and then break up, and then there'll be some come off mm. at the top, some off the bottom, and you get a lovely food trail down your peg, which you can run your float along. You're creating a bigger sort of dinner plate, so That's to right, speak. That's yeah. Bigger a area. Of, a bit of a run through, yeah. rather than everything on one spot. So I hadn't been fishing mm. long, and I hadn't had any bites. Mm. So only 10 minutes or so, I thought, this ain't right. I, it went down too hard. Mm. I misjudged how it looked faster than it was. Right, okay. So, my top-up feed's been like that. A it's smaller ball, small tiny ball, little ball. Yeah, and you can see there's a couple of pinkies in there. Yeah. And a lot looser. So when that went in, I could see it straight away, the bit's coming off it's it. It's making a nice... Nice cloud and a nice stream of feed. I went in, next chuck, got one straight mm. away. So that really enforced what I was thinking that for initial feed had gone in too mm. hard um, so I'm gonna have a top up now and we'll see I suppose it also if you miss a bite it allows you to lift your rig back up and have a run through so it gives you more chance instead of bringing your rig back to where you start yeah that's right you want to feel your way down your peg and you find little spots at certain times that are better than others you might find the, the top of your pegs great for a while yeah and then later on after 10 minutes, perhaps the end of your peg. But you'll get little runs of fish all, all up and down your peg. Um, so what I'll do now, I'll show you how I've been hooking my punch and, and, and the sort of bread I use. Basically, I use two different sorts of bread. Okay. Warburton's bread is what I use. Straight mm -hmm. out of the packet, it's perfect. It'll fluff up pretty quick once it's in the water. Now, for when I'm catching a lot of fish, the only other option I do at home, a microwave for 10 seconds, a couple of slices. This makes it a bit more tacky. Now, it doesn't swell up so quick, which isn't mm. as attractive to the fish, but it stays on the up better. You can miss an odd bite. So if you can get away with that, that's the best bait. But quite often, you'll find it needs to be fluffed up a bit to get a bite. So that's why I give myself two options. I'm using a five mil punch here, and it's just a matter of... Just that nice and easy hooking. Yeah, pull it through like that. And that's nice. The bait. So, what size hook are you using? Just, uh, just yeah, that, that's an touch eight, on that. An 18 511 mm -hmm. and a 5 mil punch. Now, on an occasion, I will use a 16. I, I started on a 16 today, mm. but um, you know, it wasn't. Uh, it didn't look like mm. it was going to be that good at the start. But obviously, since then, it's it's perked up. So, so really, Steve, this is nice, simple fishing, isn't it? Yeah, it's one line, three or four rigs, one bait. Obviously, you've got your pinkies as well, which mm. is an option, but, you, you know, um, so two baits, and that's it. It's just a matter of um, feeling your way through the peg all day, and hopefully catching plenty of fish. So, a loaf of bread, the simplest bait you can get, nice and cheap, a few pinkies, and loads of roach. Great day's fishing. Steve, I'm going to leave you to it. Oh, I'll leave you to your bagging. Oh, he's catching one of Chuck. Brilliant.
right, we're sat with Lee, and similar to Steve, he's also fishing bread punch, but he's doing it a little bit different. Oh, so you've got another quality fish, Lee. Yeah, they've been nice stamped today. Considering the weather, it's not fish too bad. So Steve's been fishing it like potting in punch and liquidised, yeah. but you've been doing it slightly different. Just tell us what, yeah, how you've well, been feeding it. Yeah, well, I started similar to Steve, cooked in a bowl, fished it out, never had a bite. Give it half hour, 25 minutes, tried it again, never had a bite. So I started chucking the ball in, trying to make something happen. And sure enough, after two or three balls went in, I got a bite. So, um, so you've been throwing it? To the noise. Yeah, right. yeah, probably come to the noise. Perhaps there weren't many fish out at the start and needed to make mm. something happen, and yeah, it happened. And your bread's been slightly different today, important to say. Where Steve's been using liquidised bread, you've been doing yours yeah, slightly different. Yeah, what I, I use 50-50 uh, uh, liquidised and mm. white crumb. I mix the white crumb first on its own, mm. and you tend to lose a lot of it when you mix it because it goes all claggy. Okay. Just keep riddling it and take your time. When you get it right, go 50-50 with your liquid eyes. Okay. It makes it go a little bit wider, so it makes it mm. a bit more appealing for the roach. I think it's good stuff. You said to me earlier about it goes down, you can squeeze it harder yeah. or softer. Yeah, the reason I use that mix, I mean, if I was on a canal, I'd perhaps just go mm. straight liquid eyes or shallow mm. water, clear water, just go straight liquid eyes. But when you come to places like the drains, mm. They can run, they can back mm. up, they can stand still. And I just think that mix is more versatile. You can do more with it. Mm. You know, you can make it harder, you can make it soft. And I'll see on your bait tray, which is different to anyone else what I've seen today, is that Lee's been using some gravel. Uh, this is just aquarium gravel. Uh, you just get from a pet shop. But that's to make it heavier, so you know exactly where your bait's going. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can get all sorts of grades in the gravel. Today's running quite hard and it's fairly deep. It's like six and a half foot deep. And with that gravel, I know I can be on the money every time I run my rig over it, I know where it is. Where if, I think if, if the gravel's a bit light, you might be unsure where it is on the bottom. So that's why I do that. Right. Well, if you go in, catch us another fish, and let's just sh show us how you've been feeding it. Yeah, I'll do my best. Important to say is um, another thing, Lee's got a chopped worm rig today, and you've been you've also yeah. been looking for some perch, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. We stay on this bridge because sometimes you get a perch or two here, and I've... Uh, I've I've tried hard all day to You've catch one. You look for a cheeky, cheeky yeah, perch no, with a camera. The cameras have put the pressure on me to catch one, <laughs> and I've let them down. <laughs> but I did try. Well, let's try and uh, I want to see how you feed this uh, this bread now. Oh, no. I'm throwing it because you, you know a lot of people will pot it for the accuracy, but Lee's pretty confident chucking the ball, and uh, and still keeping that nice yeah. tight area. Yeah, I mean it's all on the day. A lot of times in the fens now, cupping cupping is the best way to go because. Uh, the weights are less and less, and it's hard to put a weight together by throwing ground. Well, we used to throw it, throw it all day, plopping hard balls mm. in all day, and you get a lot of fish in your mm. peg. But it's not been working last three or four years, so we tend to cup a ball in and fish, fish it out. But today, it's worked for me today, chucking the ball, so I've done it. Oh, you say it's on the day, you've had to adapt? It's always on the day, Dan, you know that. It's always on the day. It could be totally different tomorrow. It's always on the day. Well, I see you feeding, Lee. I think you could have been a dart player. Absolutely spot on. So, goes to show, again, three different anglers, fishing it all slightly different, caught loads of fish. So, I hope it's inspired you. On even the coldest of days in the winter, you can still have really good day sport. I'm going to see what they've all caught now, then off home. Well, it's been a fantastic day. Three great anglers, three simple methods. So, it goes to show, even though it's really cold, get your tactics right and you can have a great day fishing. Cheers, guys.